Hey everyone, Mason XC here, and today I'm going to show you my farming method after each Blood Moon. You're going to want three locations discovered. That is the Woodland Tower right up here. You also want the Akala Ancient Tech Lab. The Lome Labyrinth right up here, which I guess four locations, but these two are pretty relatively close to each other. So you can knock them out together pretty easily. And then the Forgotten Temple over here. There's a shrine up here at the end of it that you want to be able to fast travel to. So at the Woodland Tower, there's a weapon that spawns up here every Blood Moon. And it is insanely good. It is the Royal Claymore. It has a decent amount of durability, a lot of attack. It's just really good to have in general. This is great for mini bosses and such. And now, I'm going to go to the Lome Labyrinth and start showing off the farming method. You can get tons of parts, turn them into either ancient arrows, ancient armor, ancient weapons, or sell them for a lot of rupees. I've been using them to buy a lot of my favorite armor sets and a lot of arrows. And over the course of my two playthroughs, I've tried many different farming methods after Blood Moons. I've found this cycle to be the most efficient. You can also go into the Labyrinth there if you want to and take out these two flying guardians, but you may want Revali's Gale or some other abilities. I have all of the Divine Beast powers, but I only enabled Mipha's Grace because it effectively functions like a fairy. And I want to show that basically everyone can do this method. So you want to go into this hole here. I'm also going to equip my combat gear real quick. You do not need the Champion's Tunic, but it is helpful. Stasis Plus does basically anything you could want out of it per this uh, grinding method. So yeah, you want Stasis Plus as well. It just helps freeze the Guardians for clutch scenarios and makes this overall a lot easier. And I'm just going to drop down here. And start taking care of these. Yeah, Stasis Plus just helps a ton here. And you want to sort of kite the lasers back and forth. And if you need to dodge them, you can just like run forward. I can always pick up those parts later too, it's not a big deal. If you run to the side, it can be a lot easier to dodge these. Also, Stasis resets their uh, laser detection, so it gives you way more time. Oh god, I mistimed it, but it's fine, I have Stasis. Oh no, Link, please. Yeah, locking on can be kind of iffy sometimes because of that, so you don't always need to do it in combat. It really just depends on the situation. I'm going to take care of this Guardian over here. Two slices to just take out a leg, and you can keep it uh, stunned with this. Oh god. <laughs> Love when they do that. Yeah, it's all about just kiting the lasers, playing it as safe as possible. You do get extra parts out of the legs, but it's not always worth going for. You can also save these for last just to make it uh, the easiest to farm all the legs. I sort of misplayed heavily there, but it's fine. I have Mepha's Grace, I have Fairies, I'm not too worried. Yeah, you just want to keep running sideways and they're about to fire, and they'll miss you. Like this. But jumping also helps sometimes. Yeah, right as it's about to fire, you just do this and you run into it. And you're good to go. Bam. <laughs> I should be safe here. And that's the nice thing, you can use them as cover from each other, and just wail into them, and you're good to go. The stasis should renew between each Guardian, so you should be good. There's another dormant one over there, but I'll worry about that after this. One more cut after this, bam. Yeah, you get a feel for their health after you do this a lot. Nice, I got lots of gears, those sell for a decent amount, and they're just pretty good for the crafting in general. 
surprised that second hit counted as a leg hit. But yeah, you just uh, run around in a circle, break all the legs here, you get extra parts, and then you can just sort of finish it off here. And if you're lucky, you will get cores here, and you can turn them into just basically really good equipment in general. Now that I'm done here, I will be fast traveling to the Forgotten Temple. So right here, from the fast travel point, you just want to run forward. There's going to be a lot of Guardians. You can use Stasis to scope them out. And if you kill a Guardian and you want to find its parts later because you're in danger, basically, you can just use Stasis to scope out where the parts are and such. Like if you leave a bunch of parts on the ground a decent amount of distance away. Do a combo here, alternate. Drop down here just to be safe. And I'll have stasis again by the time one fires, so I should be fine. I'm trying not to go over one stamina wheel just to show that default stamina can do this pretty efficiently. Yeah, you just want to use the terrain to sort of trick them. And reset their aggro. Sometimes there is some delay when pulling out stasis. I don't know what causes it or why. But it is a little annoying. And it can make this even more sketchy. But yeah, again, just use the terrain to draw aggro. And if you want, just like, run sideways. Run along with the laser. I don't know. I can't talk. Just like, run left or right alongside the laser and you should be good. Just remember to alternate aggro, like I said. Oh god, that hit me. I think I was still in uh, iframes during that. This is the sketchiest part, so you may want to take uh, care of the one on the ledge there. Oh god. Before doing this. There we go, Mipha's Grace. I was hoping I wouldn't have to use it here. Just to look more cool. But I got the parry to make up for it. The unnecessary parry that I could have just used stasis for. <laughs> Good times. So now, I want to go up to those two guardians there. And it's cool that a dragon appeared. Just like, it gives us nice background music outside of this terrifying melody. Wow, you really forgot I was here. Now I want to go up here, take care of this Guardian, and there's some more in the next room. Since I went in with full Master Sword durability, I can take out all or most of them. But even if you run out, you can just fast travel to the Ancient Tech Lab or wherever you want to sell the parts for Rupees. And just wait for the Master Sword to come back. Yes, the Master Sword leaves temporarily. And you can just do this every Blood Moon. Get tons of rupees, tons of parts, just get everything you basically need for your adventure. This I've just found this really helpful for a very long time, and it's overall just been the cycle that I go on whenever I farm for just materials in general after a Blood Moon. It's just the quickest and most efficient, in my opinion, out of what I've experimented with. There's probably better out there, but... With the Breath of the Wild prequel, with the Warriors game coming out in a few months, as well as the, as well as just Breath of the Wild 2 coming out in general at some point, uh, likely in 2021. I figured I would make this because there's a lot of people going back to Breath of the Wild for just out of excitement for these announcements, myself included. After the whole prequels Warriors game announcement, like Hyrule Warriors 2 essentially, Breath of the Wild, I don't know, zero. 0 0.5, whatever, because it's a prequel. I got really excited. I'm really excited for it, and I figured I would go back to this and start playing it again, and I've been having a blast, and just really happy with my decision. 
Is there one up there that's a uh, hostile? Is that a dormant one? Yeah, it's a uh, hostile. So I might as well take care of it now. Just be safe here. Do this after the first combo and it should die here. Yeah, as I said, the more you do this, the more you'll get a feel for it. And basically understand how many hits it takes to take them out. It's about 9 hits, 2 full combos, and then a final hit, essentially. For the full Master Sword with no attack buffs. You can use attack buffs too, if you really want to, but... I figure not having to use resources to get all of these other resources is really nice. Outside of maybe Mipha's Grace and Fairies for safety. Which are pretty easy to pick up. You can just wait for Mipha's Grace to recharge or pick up more fairies in the meanwhile. Oh my god. <laughs> this game is a meme and a half and I love it. Okay, one more hit. Why don't we show off that Royal Claymore we picked up? Just one hit. Bam. Oh wait, no, two. There we go. Three. Four. How are you not dead? Really good weapon, just not as effective as the Master Sword against Guardians, I guess. There's that one up there. I usually have one left when I'm done with this farming routine. But I can go to the ancient uh, Akala Tech Lab. <laughs> so funny how it still has the target on Link while you're fast traveling. And that was pretty quick, even with my recording time in the Elgato program with the intro and everything. I managed to do that in about 13 minutes, so I want to say that you can do this in under 15 minutes. Under 10 if you're incredibly fast and you're incredibly efficient. Just something you can do every Blood Moon for tons of materials. And as you can see here, I can make tons of Ancient Arrows. I actually recorded before this and forgot to hit the record button in Elgato, but I did record in uh, Audacity. Thank you, Pixel Tricks, by the way, for teaching me how to add Audacity add, uh, audio to Elgato recordings. I really appreciate it. But yeah, I had one more Ancient Core last time, so I got unlucky there with the RNG, but... Still got tons of parts. Still can sell these for tons of rupees. I'm going to go to the Gerudo area to show off just how much these can sell for. I really don't have much reasoning for this area specifically. This is just my favorite area in terms of like theme, setting, music, and stuff like that. And Link in this outfit. <laughs> Link in the Gerudo outfit looks nice. I'd smash. Let's see. Where's the arrow shop? Just to show off, you can uh, efficiently buy a ton of arrows. I think I already bought all the normal arrows. I don't know. It's really hard to see. Yeah, I did. I cleared them out, basically, after the Blood Moon happened. Just in case I wanted to make Ancient Arrows. But yeah, you can just take your Guardian parts. I'm going to sort here. Go to the end. As you can see, I have a ton. If you want, you can sell, like, I don't know, 40 springs right here. I want to sell 50, but I don't know. 40 rupees is not bad. The rarer the parts, the better the rupees you're going to get. Like if I sell, let's say, 5 of these, 200 rupees, not bad. 6 of these. 180. And 105. So yeah, if you want to sell all of the parts, you're going to get way more rupees, but I'm just trying to keep a decent amount. Just Round them out to nice, even numbers, like this. With zeros at the end. Just to turn them into armor later. But yeah, you can make way more money than that. I've used these to buy tons of armor sets. Lots of arrows. Lots of cooking ingredients. Just lots of stuff in general. I'm going to travel back and make these into armor and such. Yeah, I was kind of stingy with my sales. I could have sold way more. Or showed off like the full potent numbers. But I'm fine with this, actually. So if I sell all 90 of these, it would be 1080 rupees. <laughs> Love her dialogue. These would be 900. So 1980 total. 600. 1980. 2480, I believe. 3280. And finally, let's see, 3280 plus 320. I think 3500. 
I'm just trying to like do math off the top of my head. I just woke up. So around 3,500 if I sold everything I had from a few previous Guardians plus that trip, I think. I don't know. I don't think that's representative of that trip. I think I just had way more in my inventory before that, but... Like I said, decent amount of rupees, lots of ancient arrows. Ancient arrows help bypass a lot of the annoying areas of the game. And they just deal tons of damage to guardians, like insane amounts of damage. So they're very helpful for Hyrule Castle and just for the story in general. I'm just going to demonstrate how effective they are real quick. I'm going to put back on my combat gear and then equip ancient arrows. Check this out. Why did that noise play? Is it the Guardian below? I don't know. Yeah, again, not gonna use Ancient, uh, Divine Beast powers, whatever. Just because I want to show off you don't really need them. In general. And you don't need them for this. These Guardians are stubborn, please. I want you to aggro on me. Please find me. Please locate me. Hi. Yeah, it took out 500 health, so three Ancient Arrows just destroys these. Please locate me. Please. Oh my god, I actually... It only finds you when you don't want it to find you, of course. Hi. Notice me, please. You know what? Hi. There we go, and if you crit it, you only need two arrows. Look at that, little bouncy boy. Where'd those parts go? I see. Got plenty there, so that's nice. So yeah, these absolutely shred. Those are the strongest guardians in the game, and I killed it with two arrows. Can you believe it? I kind of can, because they're ancient arrows. So I guess I'll drop my Royal Claymore here, in honor of finding it here. Oh god, please don't. Oh no. Goodbye. All my- all my hard work amounted to nothing. Actually, it, it amounted uh, to a ton of potential Ancient Arrows, so that's more valuable than any Royal Claymore will ever be. And I also have two of them, so like, cool. <laughs> If you want a silver longsword, it has 22 attack power. It's much weaker than the Royal Claymore, but if you really want one, it's going to be in the Zora's Domain down here, next to the shrine, just right behind it. I think this is... I had a lot of fun recording this. I think it's going to turn out a bit rough around the edges, but we'll see in editing. I think it's a bit rough in a fun way. I think it has, like, just the right amount of unprofessionalism and fun in it. I don't know. It's not meant to be, like, a mega pro serious guide. I just wanted to show off my farming routine, what I found to be the best after multiple playthroughs. What has been the most efficient for me for farming ancient arrows, rupees, guardian weapons, armor, parts, or shields, stuff like that. So yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed. Let me know how you feel about the Breath of the Wild prequel, because I am super excited for that. I love this game. I love Hyrule Warriors. They're both just really fun times. I went back to, obviously, this and Hyrule Warriors recently and just had a blast of a time. And I'm ultra excited. I plan to pick that up uh, pretty quickly whenever it comes out. So, yeah. Um, bye. By the way, there's another game that Monolith Soft developed. Xenoblade 2, right over here. Right back here. There's a side expansion called Torna that I'm doing a Let's Play of. Monolith Soft developed the areas and locations, like all of the world map stuff in Breath of the Wild. So if you're interested in seeing another game from them, sort of like a more anime-inspired game that takes place in a completely different setting and universe, I am doing a Let's Play of the side game slash expansion slash prequel of Xenoblade 2, Torn of the Golden Country. It is happening on my channel currently, so feel free to check that out. I will link it in the end screen. Goodbye for real this time.